like to do is to introduce our next speaker uh, at this IHF Skills for All session. Uh, as I said in the beginning, Mr. Marco Valenci works uh, currently uh, with a club from this perspective, but has had many different roles working within ice hockey and, and is for sure one of the speakers that we can have to give various perspectives on the importance of recruitment and how to do that in an efficient and creative way within a club or a federation perspective. So I would like to switch actually seat with Marco and let him have his presentation coming up here. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Marco Valencic. I'm coming from Croatia originally, and I've been studying in Viermaki for, for a couple of years in a uh, in, uh, program of Haga Helia for co sport coaching or ice hockey coaching and management. And then I Continued working there as a as a youth youth developer and uh, international hockey uh, coordinator. And then I moved. I moved uh, two years ago. I moved to Czech or three years ago. Now I moved to Czech. So this is. Uh, so I'm I'm currently sport director and head of youth in uh, Hakalev Slani, which is a small club uh, based in Czech Republic, close to the close to Prague, and I'm. I'm a coordinator of uh, Croatian development since since year ago, and I I wanna I wanna introduce you to our story, our story of a small family club with big ambitions, and I hope great future in front of us, and I wanna share 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 the ideas and share things. How did we recruit players and how did we recruit coaches and volunteers and referees? I hope some of the stuff will will help you in your journey. So in this presentation, what I want you guys to to take out of, I want you to make you think. To I want to share our information, or I want to share the information. I want you to get new ideas and to get inspired to to actually not talk about recruitment, but actually start doing it. So first thing to introduce to introduce us, Haka Levslani. So we are about seventeen kilometers from the edge of Prague. We are a small small city. Uh, on a north northwest part of northwest part of Czech, and our location is, as I said, it's about seventeen kilometers from edge of Prague, and it's about ten kilometers from Kladno. I think quite many people know Kladno because of uh, Jager, his uh, hockey leg hockey legend. I don't think I need to talk more about him, but we are really close to Kladno, which is a uh, which is a huge hockey city with two clubs there and. Then we have a couple clubs close to us. Saloni has a club and Kralupi has a club. And in Prague, there is quite many clubs as well. So for, for us, for us, uh, what we know about what for the city is that it's a king city of Slani. It's a really nice old, old city. It has about uh, 16,000 people, so not, not much. And if we talk about 15, if we talk about 15 uh, kilometers radius of us, then around us then it has about 20 to 25000 people the plus thing about it is that there is quite many young families that have uh, children and they they moved outside of prague to live more a little bit more peaceful life but the big big disadvantage for us is that there is huge sports in a city so football is huge basketball and track and field are three big sports in the city and then upcoming sports i think in every in every country are now these quite uh, youngsters as a uh, bouldering, for example, and different martial arts uh, that are really that are really uh, growing, growing in numbers. So for us, for a couple of years, so for us, for a couple of years, we are really close to the airport. As you can see here, we are about 10, 10 kilometers, 15 minutes from the airport. And uh, and and because we because before Six years ago, we didn't really have any youth program or they didn't really have any youth program. Uh, we, thanks to the airport, and thanks to the closeness of the city, there was a couple of people who were having the club survive and having the ring survive by and bringing the efforts together to get to get hobby hockey in and to get many different national team and international teams inside so they could so they could so they could run they could run the rink so the rink would be still on and then and then what happened in 2018 
the the there was exchange of the board in the club and they set up the new mission vision and we added the values later on so as i said i came into i came in uh, two years later and and or they brought me in two years later and and we since since 2018 until now or since 2016 until now we did a lot of changes so first thing we changed the mission the mission is to popularization of the ice hockey so bringing bringing more kids mass the sports bringing youth and children in the sport and showing them the beautiful game of hockey and the vision was to have all the categories compete in the czech national competitions so to have all the age groups set there and and then we added our values which are family we want, to, we want people to feel like they're part of the family we want to involve everybody as many people as we can we want to we want kids to have fun to, to have enjoyment to respect each other to be ambitious we need to be ambitious in everything what we do and we need to have our pride pride to be part of the club and we are we still don't consider ourselves professional club but i i like the term professional like so prof, we want to be professional like club that that we maybe are not professional but we want to make it as professional as we can so what what happened was in 2000 in between 2016 and 2018 we got two main stakeholders in in our club that really helped tremendously bringing bringing the forward with all the people involved so first thing is the city of slani which is supporting us with the biggest big help of uh, giving us ice time so the city of slani is actually paying for the ice times for us so with that we can keep the costs low and the hockey doesn't get more expensive than other sports and we can we can have enough ice for development of the kids and then another 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 huge stakeholder is uh, Easy Flyers and Mr. Tomas Tomas Drastil, who is on the left picture with his son, and uh, he he owns a he owns a company for uh, for the quick transport solutions, and uh, and he really helped us financially and with supporting supporting the club with few of the smaller stakeholders. So so those are two big things how we were how we were able to to proceed and to develop our club especially with recruitment and getting more and more people people involved and then if we talk about uh if we talk about uh, membership development we for, for me what is really important is that it's a fundamental of good and sustainable program so if you don't have if you don't have people coming in then at some point your club will your club will not have members so so it's a fundamental of of going forward and it's a non-stopping process one we stop recruiting we start dying we start we start being smaller and smaller and then we need to understand or people need to understand that it's a combined effort of all the club staff and it's an ownership of the all all the club members so it's not one person or two people can be in charge of it should be in charge of it but it's actually ownership and everybody needs to be involved and i will show you a couple examples how we how we try to do that and how we try to get more more people in and then it's a crucial to continuity as i said if you don't if you don't if you don't uh, recruit then then you don't continue you are slowly disappearing so this is more of uh what what we are what kind of uh overall picture so i think i think it comes up what y'all was saying and uh, so who are who are your target group and who are your decision makers so your target group are kids, or at least for us, our target group were kids, kids from age of four to age of seven. But decision makers, we understand that decision makers are actually parents, mothers and fathers that are, those are the decision makers. So those are the ones deciding if the kid is coming in, if they are bringing the kid in. But our target group are kids. So then the question is, what are the parents looking in the youth sports? What, what do they want to get out of it? What do they want to see in it? What are their values and what are our values? Are they connecting? Are they connected to each other? Are they are they uh, working hand in hand with each other? Can we involve them in there? And then what are their points of interest? So we need to understand the market to successfully recruit new members. We need to understand what people nowadays are looking for and how they are getting to know the systems or the programs. So how do we start or where do we start? First thing we need to ask when we talk, we need to think when we talk about recruitment is that what is our budget with how much, 
money, how much people we are able to do to, to do the recruitment. Then we know the product. The product is ice hockey. It's an experience. So we are we are not selling a sport. We are we are kind of company selling our product, and our product is ice hockey, the best product in the world, by my opinion. And then then we need to know why people are why kids are joining the ice hockey. So they have fun. They have parents played. Maybe some mem family members played. Maybe friends are playing. Or, or there is many different things, but we need to we need to understand who are our decision making units. So who are our decision making units, as I said, that are that are involved, and then need to know the environment. So for example, for example, in different countries the environment is different, especially especially if now we talk globally, and and you need to understand what is your environment, how do you influence your environment, what your people in your environment look in the kids sport. And then we need the marketing strategy. We need promotion. It doesn't come up by itself. It needs to be strategized, and it, it and we need a promotion for it. Same as same as any company in the world. So this is kind of a process of how do you recruit new members that that we are normally using and we used quite many times with uh, with IHF initiatives as well. So first thing we need to know who is our target group. So for us, our tar target group are uh target group are the kids or the parents who are who are decision makers then how do we communicate the message where do we communicate the message what's the best way of doing it then if we know where to communicate the message then how do we engage them in that message how do we make it cool how do we make it interesting for them that they wanna join after that when they join we need to give them a great experience so not just a practice but actually experience so they're their mind explodes and they want to come again to join us and to and to be involved with hockey. And then after that, when we get them on the ice, that's not a, that's not the end. That's actually a start, start of a good hockey program. So we need to ask them, when do we see you again? When are you coming again? Our practice is next Tuesday and we are looking forward to see you. You'll see there is something new, new things that you will learn and you will develop. So for us, what we found out in last two years, that the Facebook ads are really working. As, as Andy said as well, I think the, or we know that so many people are now using more and more social media and, and uh, being involved with those. So nowadays, Facebook is mainly used for middle-aged people or people with the kids. So if we would want to target, for example, the teenagers, then we would use TikTok. If we would want to target uh, a little bit younger than teenagers, we would use YouTube. But we are mainly using Facebook ads and we are using sometimes Instagram ads. So with Facebook ads, it's really simple to use and it's really you can really you can really decide who you want to target with. So you choose your audience, you ch you choose the ad format, and then you have the reporting of it. So so what we did, we chose the about 15 kilometers radius about around Slani which is, as I said, 20 to 25,000 people radius and it's drivable distance to us. And we and we started recruiting them in 2017. So right before we changed, the, this, this is one of the reasons why the why the strategy was changed of our club, because every year there is a Poitrad hockey, which means uh, come and play hockey. It's a hockey week in Czech run by the Federation to bring uh, kids and you to try skating and to try playing ice hockey. So in 2017, they we did a really good job or uh, they did a really good job because I haven't been in a club yet, but they recruited, they had the biggest number of recruited kids in the whole country. And they went through 14 different schools and eight kindergartens to, to recruit kids. So with that, with that, we got, we got a good start of, of a good program. And then now in after 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 COVID, we started doing a recruitment again in 2000, in, in 2020 or 2020, the whole Czech Republic was more or less closed for for any of the for any of the activities. And, and then 2021, we started doing re recruiting again. So what we did, we did first thing what we wanted to try was with the Facebook. We put there a little bit less. So it was around nine euros, 10 euros just to try how it works to our to our uh, recruitment plan and actually we got 3000 as you can see we got 3300 people 
saw the ad and about 2,000 of them uh, reacted to the ad. For us, the big thing is that 30 of them clicked our profile and, and actually went through the things that we are offering. And then, and then again in January uh, 2022, we had another recruitment day and we now we started again with, uh, we started with Instagram. So we, we put there a little bit less than 20 euros and we had about 6,600 6, 6, people uh, reaching the ad and a hundred of them clicked on our link. So they were involved with our, with our uh, link. And it was, and, and then we added it with the Facebook as well. We did the same campaign with the Facebook. So about eight and a half thousand people clicked it. And then here, as, as you can, three, more than 3000 people reacted on it. So as I said before, the Facebook is more for the parents than, than, than the Instagram, but still we get the big reactions for the Instagram as well. And if we look at these two numbers here with the Instagram and with Facebook with one with one campaign, there was about 16,000 people who saw red, if you look at it kind of blindly, but I we would assume that it's about 10,000 different people or 12,000 people who saw the ad, which is half of the population of 15 kilometers around our club, which is basically more or less everybody who, who can see it because if you are not counting the the people without social media and the kids which we didn't target more or less everybody in the range of 20 to 50 years old who are mainly checking the kids materials on the social media saw our ad so i so that was a really big success so what we did was that was a spelling mistake it's not 2011 it's 2021 <laughs> we had a roof reconstruction in our ice rink and during the week of hockey we didn't have our ice rink but we said okay it's a big marketing campaign. We don't want to lose that opportunity to get more kids. And we will get a ring in about 10 to 15 days afterwards. So what we said that we don't have ice, we don't have a problem. Let's run the let's let's run the recruitment in front of the ring. So what we did, we had a five stations. We we wanted to make an experience for kids. As we said, it's not just a practice, it's an experience. So even in here, we had an experience that we said it's a hockey recruitment, but so many stuff were not hockey. They were just experience for the kids. So, for example, one thing what we had was hockey. It was the small area, three and three or four and four. They were playing with sticks. Then we had small. Then we had kids doing the hurdles and doing the different uh, agility stuff that they were jumping and crawling and giving high fives and and uh, enjoying. And you can see kids smiles and then on the end i i hope you see that on their hands they had the uh, stamps so we gave them we had on each station we had a stamp and we said you need to go through all those five stations you need to go at least once you can go as many times as you want and when you get the five stamps you get a small present what we have for you so we had the bottle we had a rubber band we had a poster that said when we have the next when we have the skating school and we had some kind of a ch keychain and and then the Czech, Czech Federation Czech Federation saw, or we said what we will be doing and they were really interested in it. So they came to film it and we were actually on the TV showing that actually you don't need to have ice. And I think for so many countries, this is really, so this is our skill coach, the youth coach, and this is our rink, which is getting reconstructed and we cannot really do anything in it, as you can see, uh, except clean it. So, uh, so I think for the for so many nations, it's 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 a good idea or really important to see that uh, that it's not it's it is important to have ice, but you can still give a great experience for the kids without ice, and and you can show them that this is a hockey program and they maybe do different different stuff, not just hockey, because it's important to have a good experience for the kids and to to really involve them and to show and to show them that you care. And they have fun because on the end of the day, you say we have hockey, we have a little bit of hockey, but then we have so many different things that are important for kids. Which are the, so they are, they are coordination, they are balance, agility, uh, some kind of speed. I, you can see me here posting on social media right away, which is really important. I'm not texting on a phone, I'm posting on social media so, so we can get involvement in there. And then here you can see you, you can see our junior player. This is our under 17 player. There is our goalie coach putting a stamp on a kid and 
we so as I said, it's part of the whole club, not just part of one person or or a couple coaches. On the station here, you have shooting. So for kids, it's hard to shoot, but they want to shoot with a puck, and they want they all want to succeed. So what we did, we put the old blocker on the floor, and then uh, and then they need to hit that, so it's easier for them to hit on the floor. Here we have a speed test, so we took one of the camera for the speed, and then and then they could run. That was actually the the that was the best station for all the kids. There was always the biggest line in that station. So they came to play ice hockey and the biggest line was in the sprinting, which normally not, not all of the kids are happy, happy to do, I think. So we made it fun and that's important for the kids that we have some, that we have a great experience for them. And here you can see moms, you can see our hockey moms. I know if you saw it quickly that are helping us with the registration. So we had, we had about 25 people involved in this one day. So we, it was two of us in charge of uh, planning it. Then we had uh, seven coaches run it. Then we had about 15 youth players from 13 to 20 years old. And then we had a couple of parents helping us with the uh, registration here. And it was we, we believe it was a really, really big success because you could see that we had, a, we had if I count, we had about 37 new new people coming in. And then from those people, we counted that uh, 29 of them stayed playing hockey, which is a, which is a huge, huge number. And, and we really, we were really surprised. And mainly we, what we did was we used the social media and then we put the posters around. And then another thing what we did was actually last week, because of, we believe because of COVID, in, in Czech, the indoor sports were closed for almost a year and outdoor sports were able to run their programs more with the restrictions. So we are missing kids who are 2014 uh, 14 born. So what we did, we did that we, we, we gave an event for them to bring their friends to their practice. So we had, a, we had a fun, we had fun practice with them that they did different stations. And then you could see kids. So we had a couple of older players running them and then you could see them taking pictures together and really having fun with their friends. Some of them had equipment, some of them didn't have equipment. So we took pictures of a hockey player friend with a friend that they brought. And then from those, we got 12, we got 12 new players. We got 12 players, uh, sorry, 14 players who came in. And let's see, let's see tomorrow how many of them are joining us again for the next practice. And uh, from, from the talks we had, I believe that at least half of them will join us, which is, which is quite a good number for, for us. Uh, so for recruiting new members, what is for us, what we found that is really important is that you go to schools, you go to kindergartens, you show what a cool sport hockey is, and you put the posters around, around the city. So there is a presence of your sport, of your great program. You use the social, uh, presence. So we try to be, we try to be involved with any of the programs that, for example, the city is having. Or, or any any private entities are having that we are showing that, that we exist. Then use family events. So we have a couple family events in our city and we always try to be involved as well that there is, for example, try all these different sports or try different uh, or like a family days. And we are always trying to be involved with those because you you need to have those. And then another thing is members. They need to be your ambassadors. So try to make sure that, for example, all the members have some kind of a shirt with them. What we did for the kids, we had this uh, fluorescent, fluorescent is a word, uh, fluorescent orange and green shirts for them that look really cool and you can spot them from anywhere. And then we made apparel for them that are kind of blue and white, but with all these different cool colors. So we have a really cool hat for the kids so you can really spot them everywhere and then they see the hat that I gave a, I gave one of the hats to one of my friends and it's the favorite hat now. Now for the for the long time, I always see him in that hat when I when I found him. So we, you need to make sure that there is a presence of your logo on your members, and then use the media presence as much as you can. For some, it's easier. For some, it's harder. And uh, use the social media. I think that's a big that's a big thing, as Andy said as well. That's a big thing nowadays. The social media is huge. So many people are are looking at it. And then bring bring a friend to a hockey for is one of the examples that what we could, what what you could run or what you could do to get your kids in. This really worked well for us. And remember, first thing first 
it's ownership of all the club members. It's not just one person, it's everybody. It's ownership of all the club members. They all should be involved. They all need to understand that without new new players, we are we are not able to continue running the great program as, as it is. And that's what we are trying to do. And then if we talk about players now, it's what I showed you what we did. In 2016, we had about 40, or they had about 40 to 50 members. Most of them were in the men's team. And then we had some players with U13, and then we had some kids in a skating school. And then, as I said, the big change happened in 2017-18, when the 2017, we got about 50 new kids in, or 40 new kids in, and then 2000, uh, 2018, we changed the board. And then, for example, in 2020, the COVID hit, so for a year, we weren't able to recruit. But then last year, we recruited more than 50 kids in. So now this year, we have 210 to 230 members. It varies because it depends on how you count the prep or how you count the skating school. So we have more or less all the all the players, those U13 players are now U19 players. We are missing uh, U17, which would be U12 or U11, before which we didn't have. So, so we started recruiting from younger and now we have almost all the age groups, or we are missing just one. And this this first year, first year we have first year ever we have those all in the in 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 the age categories. And then when we talk about volunteers, so this was recruitment from the new members. Now when we talk about volunteers or recruit recruiting volunteers, there is there is different volunteers. That in in five or six years when you move from from forty people, now you move to more than four times bigger uh, group, you need a lot of volunteers. And sometimes that's hard to find. Of course, the ho hockey is a big sport in Czech, but as I said, it's 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 a, we are a small city and we have a lot of big sports. Football is really big. It's even in some calculations, it's maybe it's bigger. It, it is bigger than hockey in Czech still. And then in our city, there's a couple of big sports that are supported as well. So, so getting the volunteers, we need to get a lot of volunteers in five years to help us run the good program to have, for example, enough coaches on the ice. So when we talk about volunteers, first thing you need to ask, it's as simple as that. If you don't ask, you don't know. If you don't ask, you don't get people. So first thing you need to ask, and when you're asking, you need to be clear what is their job descriptions, what they can help, what they can do for you, how they can help you. Then second, then after that, you need to you need to define their workload. So how much of their time you need. After that, you need to help them kind of develop and first of all, learn and then develop. So kind of a body system. So for example, we have in each age category, we have a team leader who is a parent, who is a volunteer. And when they start, they have our secretary who is as well volunteer, uh, helping them to understand the process and what they need to do. And then they are communicating with the older ones and 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 helping helping them as well. So kind of a body system, somebody who would help you first learn and then later on develop. Then you need to provide them tools with everything what you what what they need, or at least try to help them with what they need. After that, ask for the feedback and listen for input. Can we do something better? Can we do something differently? What would you do in our place? How we can make your life easier? How our life can be easier? Then after that, we need to recognize creativity that comes after this listening, the input that we actually, we recognize what they do or we recognize their creative ways of thinking differently. And then support and improve. So always try to support them with what they do and we are what we want to improve our programs. And then on the end, the most important part is that, that they feel that they feel the gratitude from us, that they help us. So thanking them and rewarding them for 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 their input. The reward and the thank can be in many different ways. So you find your own way with, with what you think is the best. For example, for the coaches, we always make some kind of a Christmas party on, or, or for now we started doing that. Uh, the coaches who are working hard and who are, who are really willing to, who are willing to help us extra, we help them to, we give them an, a reward that they can develop. So for example, in two weeks, we bring two coaches to Germany to the ICC and uh, I coach kids seminar together. They have a presentation for two days. So club is bringing them there. They are paying their costs and their entry. So this is kind of a reward for them. And then, and then if we talk about recruiting the volu coaches volunteers, so how do you start? I was talking with Kale that I want to explain you guys how did we do it and it's kind of there is no magic magic stick that it that, that it that it uh, helps you. 
it's simple but not easy it's quite simple but not easy so it's asking parents who are close to the ice you have so many parents that are close to the ice that are always trying to be involved ask them if they can help you on the ice not just standing next to it ask your current players so i always go around our under 20 team or our national or our men's team but mainly our under 20 team to ask to get more players in that's how last two years since i'm here we got four new coaches from under 20 uh, involved in then ask your ex players so some of the players who stopped playing if you have contact with them ask them if they can join that's how we got our our goalie coaching now asking uh coaches if they have any friends uh so if so if they could help us if they they have some friends who are working together with them or they played together and they stopped if if they want to join us and help us then communicating with the sport universities if you have some sport universities in the in the city so close to us on the edge of the Prague where we are in it's the Charles University for coaching so we are communicating there if we can get some coaches in then other sports good teachers so for example if you have skating school and then you have some figure skating who is really good with kids maybe she or he can help you or or we have a or there is some parent who is doing some other sports and they could help you or then public skating enthusiasts so we we start we we have a we have one person who is who is helping with the with the public skating and he's kind of a, how would you say security there but he is actually helping with the public skating and the small kids so we asked him that can you do you want to help us with our recruitment program and he was more more than happy he's more than happy to help and he's he's a tremendous help for us so all these kind of a small things everyday things uh like i said there is no magic stick that you just you just come from couple coaches to thousands of coaches but you always need to be involved as andy said as well that you need to be involved the whole time and try to get as many like try to talk to as many people as you can and then when you, you can see when, where they can fit if they can fit your program so in 2016 we had one professional coach who was paid by the by the federation we had five licensed volunteer coaches so in Czech you have abc license and then we had a few parent volunteer coaches now in 2022 we have three professional coaches we have 14 licensed volunteer coaches we have eight to ten parents additional parent volunteer coaches and then we have several players who are helping us with the skating school and younger age categories so i'm a big believer in in involving the players helping you with younger age categories because first of all maybe sometimes they in the, maybe they understand that what how hard is coaching so they will be actually helping you in their own team coach them and listening more and transferring that knowledge second thing is that maybe they will grow a little bit because you give them a little bit of responsibility so sometimes we even give them a station that they play three and three and they just need to supervise the station two of them together and then a third thing is which is important that you get as well that you with that after a certain time they start coaching as well they they want to be coaches that's 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 exactly how I, I started I was helping as a 15 year old and then I started coaching ever since then playing and coaching and then if we talk about finding additional volunteers to run the club which is which is important as well because club cannot be run only with few people you need really help as i said first thing is to ask if you don't ask you don't get any answers you don't get any help so what we did we said to the parents hey we have a problem can you help us find a solution or we said hey we need some help in this and this area can you assist us and what we what we had before in 2000 or what they had before in 2016 they had a few uh, few volunteers in the office so kind of uh, like, uh, the the team leaders or or the secretaries or the president who were volunteers and then one equipment manager in 2022 we have 18 to 25 additional volunteers that are helping us with the club operation so we have a secretary president vice president are helping 10 team leaders that are helping two equipment managers uh fun shop so we have uh, two people who are helping us with the fun shop we have a person who is helping us with the equipment program which i'll talk a little bit and then we have a couple occasional volunteers so for example we have a parent who help us set up and donate the camera so we have a live stream we have parents who are helping us setting up some additional stuff that we need some kind of repairs in the locker rooms or repairs with the, with the training tools uh, that we have 
and uh, and then recruiting the volunteers, the team leaders, which are important. So uh, we believe that between the we believe that all because we are we are now bigger and bigger, and every team needs to have a team leader who is in charge, kind of checking out that that everybody pay their fees. That we have organized the referees, we have organized the doctor, we have organized the the games. That we have organized everything what we need concerning that team, and it's and and for us this is a really big this is a really big thing that helps us is that that person is a lot in contact with coaches, but it's a parent, so it's kind of connection between parent and coach that is running really well. Uh, and then parents are coming. So, so how do we how do we get to them? So the parents are, who are coming to the all practices, the parents that are that wanna be the parents that are involved in those practices that are there. So you ask them, hey, you are an organized person. Can you help us? This is what we need. Or you are coming to the practices. Would you like to be interested in 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 helping us to bring this team or to bring the club to the next level? And then, as I said before, the body system. So we have our secretary assisting us in learning and developing. And developing them, assisting them in learning and and developing them. So what what is needed and and what how they can improve. And then when we talk about the equipment manager, so we had the problem with sharpening the skates, and 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 then what we what happened was that we we said, hey, we need help. Can you help us with this? Are are you good with working with hands? Are you kind of a handyman? Uh, do you have extra free time? So we found two parents who are who said yes. And and we got a new sharp machine. We got a new sharpening machine, and we said, "Hey, we can help you. We can teach you. We can get somebody to teach you how to sharp the skates." And you just need to be, you just you just if you want to be involved, then we are more than happy. And then we got it's it, it's again it's there is no magic stick. There is no correct answer. It's being involved with people, communicating with them, asking them questions, and and try to find a good spot for each person who wants to be involved in the club. And then, and then after when we talk about this, another thing is that, hey, we don't have this and this, and we really need it for our development. And do you have some ideas how we can do it? So, for example, what we had in 2016, we just had a sharpening machine. If we talk about additional material around the ring, and now what we have, we have a pro sharp that is sharpening our skates. We have a skate mill. It's a skating training tool that was sponsored by the by uh, Mr. Drastil. Uh, the sharpening machine was sponsored by another pair, Mr. Volk. Then we have a shooting area in the ring that we, we did. Then we have a gym, smaller gym. Now we are in a process of extending it, making it a workout plus gym area. Then we have a first equipment rental program. So this is a person who is, or we, we started collecting the equipment and we got some support from the Czech Federation to get the equipment. And we have the first equipment kind of support. So we give the first equipment to the players for a, uh, for a small rental fee that they get back after after they return the equipment and that's how it's easy that's why it's easy to start the hockey so you don't have huge expense in the beginning but little by little you can you can buy the equipment i think that's a great great tool for for getting new people in then we have a live streaming like I said one of the parents who is in it he donated a camera and set up the live streaming so we can watch all the games and for example now when i'm here in Zurich, i can see what we are doing on the practices or i can watch our games uh recorded then we have a we started with a professional therapist program this year we have all the teams are coming every twice a week they are having a small groups of 10 to 12 kids a professional therapist who is doing the who is doing the small muscles who is doing the the all, all different stuff that are needed for hockey and and for example the stretching as well then since since when I came in the program, I saw that we don't have any goalie program. We had a person helping us from Kladno who was coming a few times a week to do our goalie, to, to help with our goalies. But then we started having a goalie program. So now we have a person in charge of a goalie program and I'm helping there with couple with, with couple parents and, and couple older goalies helping younger goalies. As I said, I think that's really important to have. And then we have a, with that goalie program, we have uh, equipment support as well because goal equipment is really expensive nowadays. So our club is is uh, helping with a certain with a certain equipment parts, and they are they are uh, they are giving some they are giving part of the money in for equipment that is staying later on in the club. So for example, we can use the goalie pads or the or the chest protector later on for the younger ones. So when we get a pool of of the equipment, same as the first equipment, we can we can give it to the players who don't have that much 
that much money. And with this equipment support for the goalies, for example, what we got that, that people who have a little bit more money, they actually donated their equipment to our club and they didn't ask for anything. So we got we got a lot of people involved. We build a community around it. We have now, we have a long-term development plan. And as I showed you in the beginning as well, we have mission, vision, and our values that we are trying to accomplish. So there was a big, big kind of step forward. And it's, it's first thing is that, First thing is that ask, ask what you, or tell, tell that this is what we need. And if we can get something, it took time. It took time to, to, to change things. It didn't happen over the, over the night. It took, as you see, five years and, and little by little, we got one step, one step forward at a time. As, as you can see, the gym still is not done. We hope it will be done by the next year. There will be enough money collected for it. So little by little, it, it, it takes time. You need to be patient and you need to push push forward and not give up so and then another thing is about the recruiting the volunteers for the game officials for the referees i think this is a big big problem nowadays in many countries that they are missing the referees and uh and uh so in czech it's kind of made so that the clubs are responsible of getting the more and more referees but they have they have their own organization but clubs are responsible of helping them because if you don't have referees in your community in your club in your region then you need to buy referees from abroad which is more more much more expensive and sometimes they don't give you the refs because they don't have enough so that's i think that's issue with many many places and for us that was issue as well so so what i did again is that main part was that with the younger players you seven you can be a referee in checks from the age of 15 14 or 15 i can't remember exactly now but then we started talking with our under 17 under nine our 19 and the teams and uh and trying to get more people involved so normally i would talk with i would we would talk with all the individuals and and then we would check if they want to be referees or they want to be coaches or they want to help or they want to be office officials and and try to communicate that message with them and show them why it is cool or why we want them to be there and even even with the younger ones we try to get them involved with the small area games. So they try to do the small area, like for example, U7 games. And if they like it, then we send them to the course and 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 they get the knowledge there. So try to get the mainstream for us to get the referees or younger players that that, that they want to help with the club. And they're they are in the ring quite a lot. Then you have parents, quite 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 many parents, they are always kind of involved with those, and then and then you want them to. You ask them if they want to be the referees as well to help them or some siblings. So we have some brothers. We have a couple, two, three brothers who want to, who started being referees because their brother, like one of the brothers is playing, another one was played and maybe quit. And then we ask them if they want to be referees. So they started then a couple friends as well we have. So again, it's, there is no, I think, I don't think there is magic answer. Uh, Yoel is a much bigger expert in this area than, than us, but but I think for now we are doing we 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 improved a lot with the number of referees since since two years ago three years ago when I came uh, we have we have quite many more nowadays and and I think this is important as well for the club for the club development that you you talk with people and then you see where they suited for so this is for me to you a little bit of a help uh, to improve the actual situation. And this is, for example, what we are guided from. So first thing is that, that you have a club visibility in the ring, the points of sales. So POS, point of sale. So rink is our kind of point of sale. We want to have a lot of visib visibility of the club. Second is the club identification of the club members so that you have a shirt, you have hats, you have as many tools as you can. So people, that your members can represent your club and be proud of being part of the club and showing it to the new new maybe possible new members another thing is that on your web page is it easy to find a recruitment program and if it's easy to find a recruitment program does it clearly state who to contact how to contact when it is and where it is those information is to be easy to find and it's to be one click away it shouldn't be five clicks away because people get lost or people don't do it anymore they just they just stop trying so it needs to be easy it needs to be simple right there on the on your main page then another thing what we try to do or what we did in our in our ring we made like a board with a second hand market where is a sales program or club assisting or where is a sales program so people can print out their 
there, for example, old skates or old helmet, they put it there and then it can be it can be used from another another person for certain fee. So we, we believe this is a big help for parents who to make to make hockey not that expensive because nowadays that's a, sometimes that's a big issue. So make it make it more accessible to everybody. And then another thing is the club assisting with the first gear. I know that's really hard to start because it requires quite much money, but you do it little by little, step by step to to have that to try to have that program that club is assisting at least with part of the gear or part of the cost. Another thing is improve the media presence. So media presence and and the social media presence as well. That are you are you involving there? We started our Instagram account. We have our Facebook account and our Instagram account that we started a year ago now, if I believe. And I think we one of the full time coaches is doing it, and he's doing a great job with it. And we got so many people involved, and so many kids involved. They want to see themselves there. And then promote your own events better. So inform the stakeholders. So if you have a skating school, don't just don't just know three of you. But all the club needs to know what is happening and how they can help. Try to involve all of them as many as you can so they can spread the message for you as well. And then the last part is with the volunteer program, as I said many times, and first thing is to ask. So many times it happens that we don't ask, we forget to ask, and then we don't go anywhere. So first thing is ask, ask the people to help you, tell them what is your issue and if, if they can help or if they, if they find somebody to help you. And that's about it for me. I hope this helped you. I hope it inspired you and gave you some ideas. So for the more technically advanced, if you scan this QR code, you get my contact information. That you can contact me if you have any questions or, or anything or, or just, just uh, in the future, if you need any help, let me know. And this is what our, what started of skill for all, uh, our great friend Johan was saying always that no excuses, make it happen. So, so if you have if you have an excuse, then it means that it doesn't that you that it, it's not important for you. If it's important for you, you'll find a way to make it work, make it happen. So make it happen. If you need any help, here is as well our my contact information in written, so it's easier for you guys to to find it. Uh, so thank you, thank you for listening. I hope this this will help you. You got some kind of ideas, and as I said, we were really that we were really small in a small city and we are now bigger and bigger trying to get bigger every year so i think i think it's important to understand that it's a not one year process or one month process it's a long term process that never ends and uh it's really important to be patient and to be hard working and trying trying to do what is needed to do thanks Marco, thank you so much. Please uh, continue to sit there. I will just check with our technical side that, that they can hear us, and I hope you can hear both myself and, and Marco right now. They give me a thumbs up. That's that's really good. So, <clears throat> Marco, first of all, how many hours is your day having? It sounds like it's a 27-hour setup here, but it's really fascinating to hear about the, the journey that you've been uh, involved with in your club. Uh, we we continue to keep the chat open a little bit to see if there's any questions coming in. Uh, I see we have a few, uh, but please, if you have anything coming up, don't hesitate to use that chat function. So I, I really like, and one thing that stuck with me is you talk about membership. Yeah. You know, we we see a lot of hockey players, but we still talk about the members. And in, in, in this perspective and, and in many other countries, you know, uh, it's a very traditional setup to be involved in hockey. You become a member of a club. Some members even own the club. Some of their our membership is giving them the, the opportunity to play hockey. How do you see, and, and maybe it's a big question on a, on a shooting bit from the hip, but how do you see the membership developing within ice hockey to keep that community? I mean, you can be a member, member on Xbox Live, or you can be mm -hmm. a member on a, a wall climbing <laughs> club where you can decide when to be active or how to be active. But hockey have their practice hours. You know, we still have our core product, ice hockey, yeah. and around the membership. So how do you see the development of memberships of overall future? hockey of overall hockey <laughs> well i think i think you you got it spot on so i i we came in i came in yesterday and for example i we had a meeting and then i had a short period of time so next to you guys it's a fifa museum and it's a huge part of esport fifa which i had no clue 
but I think that's the next step for us as well. If we want to develop, we need to develop different products, and maybe one of them is this online online product that we have, and uh, and getting more and more people involved because if we have a uh, more people involved, then more people will hear about the sport, and then they will talk about the sport, and then on the end of the day, we'll get more people in our recruitment programs. If we talk about it, for example, you have people who are doing esports. They might not be a players, but they might be a stakeholders, might be a sponsors, might be a referees or a team leaders, and or they will just bring their kids to the sport. So I think the big, big thing is that we get involved as many people as possible, and it doesn't really matter in what way, because on the end of the day, that way will come what we are kind of looking for. Because I really like the example that you have on how to activate the members. Yeah. In this case, you activate the kids without even having a ice surface to yeah, play. Yeah. But there was still a lot of commitment. There exactly. was a lot of passion. So I, I truly, I, I share that with you as well. And I'm happy to hear, you know, that you say that maybe the future hockey environment, you know, one of the recruitment aspect is to get actual players are really important. Yeah. But how do you create that environment with a membership? And even if it's a physical, digital, or just a feeling of being a member of something, what more can we activate them? And I, yeah. I really, I really enjoyed listening into a little bit of your perspectives yeah. on that. Yeah, exactly. And I think if we are happy or not happy about it, but the truth of the matter is that we are moving online. Everything is moving online. So as as you showed our statistics, because I think the Czech is a little bit traditional country, but if you show if you saw our statistics, uh, that we we got to we got a reach of how many people with a Facebook and an Instagram advertisement. And if you think about putting the posters on the wall or going to schools, which we did as well, but how much time required yeah. to do it and how many people we interacted with, it's a big difference. You need to do both. In my opinion, you need to do both. You need to do as much as you can. And But but this is one of the things that we need to take advantage of, for sure, for sure. To get, to get more people on the ice, you need to get more community around it. So I would say if we stay on that topic, I also, you know, have a... a... I really thought that was a great reflection from your side. You know, when you when you reach out to new venues, I mean, obviously, when you do that in the ice rink, yeah. maybe you reach the parents that what I would call, and hopefully that's understandable for the crowd, could be maybe a second generation uh, hockey family yeah. or a hockey parent or hockey person, <clears throat> which means that they have in some way or form already been involved. Yeah. So they are moving in our clubhouses, in our rinks, in, in a hockey environment, and where we reach maybe saying okay well i played as a kid i want my kids to play yeah, exactly. but when you go broader and when you go maybe on social media uh, i hope and i would only assume that you would reach a lot of call it first generation yeah. hockey players where the parents or the grandparents they maybe they know a little bit of hockey depending on the country but in some countries they might not, not even have heard about it and yeah, exactly. in some countries hockey might be playing with a ball and and outside yeah. so just the concept is new what do you say is the the challenge or the uh, could be also an opportunity working with you know the parents or the players that will become in their families the first generation of hockey players well the challenge is to if if they go online hockey is two things hockey it, it, they say that hockey is a rough sport and hockey is an expensive sport and these are two things that we need to make sure that explain that this is not what we want so that's why we have the first equipment to get it for for free and that's why we have the support for the for the goalies or we have the like a flea market kind of for the old equipment so we show that hockey is not that expensive and then another thing is if we talk about the roughness of the hockey we want to explain there is no body checking to a certain age and how the fights are not really uh not really okay anymore you get a big big penalty coming in after a fight so you need to explain to parents that it's a safe sport and it's a good sport for their kid and uh, I think I think that's the case. And as, as, exactly as you said, coming to your point that how we reach certain people. So when we had this on the next to the road, the, our recruitment program, we got uh, we got uh, our, we got 37 new players in on the end of that year. So last year we got more than 50 new members in our club by the end of the year. But from those 37, there was a mom driving with a car, seeing that there is a lot of kids there stopped by and said, what is happening here? And we got two new kids in and they're now playing hockey without even knowing what is going on. So I believe that I believe that you need to be present in, in as many occasions as possible. So as I said before, you know, like the family events or, or any other events that you, you guys can be 
present. I think that's 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 really important. It's not even hockey. So shopping malls, I know, for example, in Asia, there is big shopping malls going on and those. So be present there. Try to get as many people and kids possibly seeing your your ad or or your program. And and staying a little bit on that topic, when when you do your planning within your community and within your club, how how do you find that balance between, you know, you have the hockey, you have the hockey practice, you have the hockey product that you that you offer. Yeah. But when you talk to parents or or kids, you know, if they if you only offer them or only if you're able to offer them maybe once or twice ice practice every week and maybe a game, how much do you look outside the hockey part to offer the kids? And you exactly. talked about community, you talked about uh, friendship. You know, how do you create this to keep a balance between, okay, we need to focus on hockey, mm. but we also want to create a, a added on value for our yeah. members so that they feel that, hey, you know, this mm. hockey is giving me a lot more yeah. than just three times ice at one hour in, in a week. Yeah. So for example, for example, in, I, I think in Czech, that's not that huge of a problem because we have quite many practices. We are lucky enough for that. We are all, you are always missing the ice. It's yeah. never enough. But we have, let's say, we can we can manage with what we have. Uh, but for example, in Croatia, where I'm helping, uh, they are they are lacking of the ice rings, and that's like a huge problem. But what what they are doing there is that we have all, they have off ices. They have, for example, in the weekend sometimes they gather together and go to the to the mountain mm -hmm. to like a picnic or something. So so try to do different activities, and especially for the younger kids, it's important to explain to the parents that it's not just about hockey. It's about fundamental movement skills, agility, balance, coordination, speed, and all these different things that you do outside of hockey. And quite many of the kids nowadays are not doing any of those. They just do one sport because of the price or because of the time consumption or because of the any other reason. But, but we need to explain that this is what we want to do. We want to teach their kids to be a good human beings, to be a good sportsman, and then we want to teach them some hockey. So, for example, this is why we added we have a physio every two weeks for our kids because we saw that uh, our kids are lacking or for example they are not standing the correctly they have you know like all the kids shoulder in front they have the back tilt some of the older ones have problems with hips so so this is what we did outside of hockey then we have some office practices as well for them or then we have some kind we have uh, some kind of uh, um, get, getting together getting together for example going on a games or, or or just overall during the weekend if you have free weekend to do something like a couple times a year we do this big club party or playing on a playground and kids are having fun so building a community out of it and then uh, enjoying enjoying the sport and every minute of it so you know we, with all the things you got going on and and i see we have in our meeting roughly 50 people as well uh that are just as you very passionate very interested and and i i can only assume extremely active in this because it, yeah. it, it will be a lot of work but what would be your kind of recommendation that was a question in the chat as well about you know the the uh, implementation and how you you work with a hands-on so you're in daily business you yeah. do this every day yeah. either if you're employed or you do it voluntarily but play with the thought that you do something else one day you wake up and say hey now I go and I, I go to another club or I don't want to have another job or something for the club. How how have you been constructing or documenting or how important is it that that this lives on beyond one person, one sport manager, one director or a working group or a volunteer group? How important is documentation? It sounds a little bit boring, but I understand, is it I playing understand. an important role? I, I I believe in long long uh, I believe in lifelong development, and this is the next thing I need to develop <laughs> on myself. <laughs> so I'm I'm trying to document as much as possible, and I became better and better year by year. Because when I was I was working in Viermaki before I was in charge of the biggest uh, biggest uh, development camp in uh, in Finland, run by with the Finnish Federation. But I, I was running it, and when I was leaving, I realized. I don't have like a documentation. So then it was okay. I did this, I did this. It, but but then I realized that this is actually what I'm missing. So now what I'm trying to do, I try to spread the knowledge to other people, not just keeping it for myself, but spread it to other people, get more people involved. And then trying to make some kind of a note, what is done, what 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 things did we do? What things did we do and how we did it? But I, I believe this is, Sometimes because you are so busy, you don't 
think you think you don't have time for it or you really don't have time for it or you don't you don't let's say you don't make time yeah. for it that's that's the correct wording but i i think this is a thing that i really need to in the future i need to develop yeah. that and uh, do you think like you said do you think making that time for documentation and reflection saves a little bit of a time yes. on the other side yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. for sure so uh, I think that actually covered a little bit the, the question that got in. We still have a, a few minutes if anyone want to add any more questions uh, in the in the chat here as well. But Marco, from my side, just the last question before we kind of round it up would be, you know, you, you make a work now in, in, in your club yeah. and the, the people involved there and also for the future generation. Uh, if you would look back in, in 30 years on, on the work that you did, what would be the, the words you would like to hear the people talk about? What would be the lasting memories, not of you, but of the people involved in your activities? I <clears throat> I think the, the lasting memory of overall would be uh, making a difference or making a good change. Trying to, I think those are those that were making a difference for the, for the people involved. So not, I think we don't do this for us, but we don't do it for next generations, and I think that's important. And for example, that's why I got involved with uh, with all the all different IHF programs as well, and I really enjoy. I think I think the high performance sport is cool; it's really cool. But I think the making a difference and actually and actually improve, improving the sports for bigger 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 audi audience is by by this grassroots and and development of the of the youth. And I really, I really enjoy doing that and trying to improve every day. So, I that 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 that's for me kind of like the calling. I would say, Marco, thank you so much for coming here. Uh, we now gonna wrap up a little bit here and go through what will come up here next. And still, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to use the last minutes to to do that. But I will share my screen again, and then we'll wrap up this skills for all, and we will look into what we have coming up. So we're really happy that so many people here had opportunity to tune in live with us at this IHF Skills for All. Uh, as I said a little bit earlier, we do apologize that we had some technical issues with uh, with our uh, with our VMO uh, broadcast. I really want to emphasize that we will, or we have recorded, we will upload this and send it out as soon as it's even possible so that you within your federations or within your clubs or within your membership can send this out so other people can also take part of the presentations from Andy and from, from Marco. And just as any team or as in any organization, we'll look into now how we can be maybe for the next time a little bit more efficient and get all our players on the ice you know, to work in the same direction and get our studio up and running to 100%. But this is coming up very soon for us, and we hope that you will uh, would like to be a part of that uh, part of that topic as well. Because already on the fourteenth of December, we will be back here from Zurich. We will be in our studio, and the topic will then be women's hockey development. I'm really excited here in the coming days that we will send out more information about this. We'll present a little bit of about our speakers on this very important topic. And for myself, just coming back from the World Women's and looking forward to the under 18 World Women starting up soon in Sweden and Östersund, this topic is extremely exciting and we can only see what happens on the top level and coming underneath from grassroots hockey, from recruitment, from education and from development. So make sure that you tune in and that you write down already now 14th of December, 2022 for women's hockey development here on IHF Skills for All. And make sure you have this in your calendar also moving forward. As you see on this timeline, we have already set topics until April, and we will add on more topics after April as well. And a pretty good rule of thumb is that every second Wednesday of the month, this is when we will have this skills for all. And we will be here in roughly the same time as well. But not look too far ahead in April. Please sign up for the 14th of December and the skills for all regarding women's hockey development. So from the IHF studio, from myself and on behalf of Andy and, and Marco, thank you so much for your participation today. Thank you so much for your hard work around the world in the global hockey family on 
the topic of recruitment. We really hope that you are able to use these tools moving forward within your organizations to create opportunities for future hockey players to be a part of this amazing sport. Thank you so much from Zurich, and we're looking forward to see you soon again. Bye.